G'day, I'm Chris, a Kiwi Bee Man. Today I'm going to be using the Instant Vap to vaporize some of my hives with oxalic acid. While I'm running the Instant Vap today, I'm going to talk to you about this thing. This is a little device that I've made, which I'm just trialing today to hopefully make it easier to use the Instant Vap. And I'll explain as I do it why I think it will make it easier. I spotted some deformed wing syndrome in one of my hives the other day so a couple of days later I was teaching a beekeeping class so I killed two birds with one stone by doing an alcohol wash test with the class present so I could teach them how to do it and also at the same time it just gave me an idea of what I had uh, in terms of mite levels. I only tested one hive and I got quite a high count, 10 mites per 100 bees. That's too high for my liking, so I'm going to go around all my hives and knock the levels down with three or four rounds of oxalic acid and then new oxalic acid strips in as a follow-up. Today I'm using the 18 volt instant vap cordless version that runs on a DeWalt battery. This, this particular model runs on a DeWalt battery. You can get them also to run on uh, Makita and Milwaukee and other different brands of 18 volt batteries. As it happens, I also have here an Instant Vap Compact. This has been sent to me on loan by Russell at Bequip to try out. Unfortunately, this one is set up to run a Makita battery and I don't have a Makita battery. I was gonna go and buy one. I've shopped around all my friends looking for one that I could borrow for a day just to give this thing a run and have failed miserably. However, one of them mentioned that his son bought an adapter and so I went online and discovered that I, for not too much money I can buy an adapter which will allow me to plug my 18 volt DeWalt battery into the adapter and plug the adapter into this Makita mounted unit so that'll be the next video if you want to see that make sure you're subscribed so to explain what this device is i need to first explain how i vaporize my hives and what the key issue is for me and why this makes the process a lot easier when i first started vaporizing using an instant vap i drilled holes high up in the box because I figured that that was the easiest way to get the vapor right through the hive because if it was high up, it would settle down through the hive. However, Russell from Bequip pointed out quite rightly that if I inadvertently drill that hole there directly in line with the frame, then the vapor goes in and hits the frame and when it hits the frame, it condenses and doesn't circulate through the hive. So you need a couple of hundred mils of free space in front of the tip of the vaporizer to prevent that condensation from happening. So since then, I've moved to putting my holes low down like that. I've been blocking them up with tape. As you can see, the bees pull the tape off. Ideally, I'd have a small peg to put in each hole. Something like a golf tee is what's recommended. I haven't ever bothered with that. A lot of the time I just leave the holes open and the bees come and go from them. It doesn't seem to cause any harm. To do a really good job of vaporizing, you really need to block the entrance. As you can see here, I have my hives on stands. If I'm vaporizing this particular hive here, in order to block the entrance, I've got to walk right around the end of the stand and all the way along the front. So I suppose I could carry enough rags with me to go along and block all the entrances all in one go but I prefer my solution. I need to add that I only made this thing this morning and so this test run that you're going to see right now is its first trial. So I could be eating uh, humble pie or I could not release the video if it doesn't work. Before I start vaporizing these hives from the front I'm just going to go around the back and put fresh tape over the holes that are in the back just to keep that vapor in a bit tighter. As I've said, this tape doesn't last very long, but it'll do for today so that I can get this video made. You can see bits of paper hanging out of this hive. I've recently paper merged two hives together here. So even though I've got wonderful quiet bees, I have put a suit on. I am gonna wear a full blown respirator mask I'm not going to try and talk through the mask, it just comes out as a muffled garble. So I'll do the process without talking and do a voiceover to explain what I'm doing. I'm going to start 
by doing a couple of hives an alternative way and probably the way most of you do it which is just using a cloth to block off the entrance around the instant vat and then I'll give this thing a bit of a run. So if you haven't seen the Instant Vat before, I've done a review of it in a different video. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find out more about it. I did an independent review. Lots of people have watched it and clearly uh, there are lots of people out there using them. So as you can see, even with the cloth around the Instant Vat, there's a little bit of leakage of vapour coming out of uh, the front entrance. However, uh, if you fire the instant vac, any vaporizer, out into the open air and see how much vapor comes out of it, you'll know that that's a tiny fraction of what comes out. Now I'm playing this video in real time, just so you can get a sense for how long it takes, so that if you're one of those people that hasn't seen an instant vac before, you can see how quickly it happens. It takes about 20 seconds to vaporize a hive. So what I do is I count slowly to 25. I'm just trying to plug up some of those leakages. If you look closely in this hive, you'll see a bee come out covered in vapor. So it's doing its job. What you'll also notice is that the field bees from uh, that were out foraging when I started this process are gathering around at the entrance of the blocked entrance of the hive. That is one of the drawbacks of vaporization. Unless you do it early in the morning, late in the evening, or on a cold day, there are going to be field bees out that miss the treatment. So now it's time to try the little gadget that I've made. Now this thing serves two purposes. Firstly, it blocks the front of the hive, and then secondly, when you put the instant vat into the hole, you can see that it's supporting it. One of the concerns I have about the instant vat is that all of the weight is being supported by the little tube that sticks out the front. And if you're running a big 6 amp hour battery on it, there is actually quite a lot of weight hanging down off that instant vat. You'll see there's a little bit of leakage around the front, slightly more in this instance than when I used the cloth, but you can actually see down the far end of that hive, there's a little bit of leakage happening down there too, which is pretty normal. Not every hive is perfectly sealed, and that's demonstrating to me that that hive is chock-a-block full of vapours and that the instant vap is doing its job. You might have noticed that the uh, board across the front entrance was slightly recessed on that hive. It's not made to the perfect dimensions, and that's probably why there was some leakage. So on this hive, it's got a smoother front. I'm gonna fast forward the footage here. You've now got a sense of how long this process takes, but you will still see, even with the fast forwarded footage, just how much vapor escapes. Again, a little bit of vapor escaping, but not a lot. Two more hives to go. Again, I'm gonna fast forward the footage. This is the hive that I did a video about doing a cutout. Uh, a few weeks ago and that uh, hive is now queen right and going really well. So once again, pop the oxalic acid into the hive and 20 seconds later the job's done and I can move on to the next hive. So the whole process is quite streamlined. I'm not running backwards and forwards between the front and the back of the hive. I'm just wandering along the front inserting the instant bat, waiting, loading it up, which only takes a couple of seconds, popping the oxalic acid in with that little measuring device, tapping it down, and 20 seconds later, the job's done. Voiceover finished. 
back to me talking to the camera. Okay, so what's the conclusion? I think my little gadget works really well. I know that the instant vat works really well. There was a little bit of leakage of vapour from around the contraption that I designed, but there was leakage from the cloth that I used in the alternative method. Granted, if you drill a hole in the back and you plug the front of the hive tightly with a cloth, you'll get less leakage. But as I've already said, that doesn't suit my operation because it means I have to walk around the front of the hives to block them and then round the back to vaporize them. So as I said, I'm reviewing this little guy. This is the Instant Vat Compact, which was sent to me by Russell from Beequip. There were no strings attached. When I review this one, it'll be a completely independent review. There's no sponsorship involved. But remember, if you want to see that video, make sure you've hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of all of my videos and I'll bring that video to you as soon as the adapter that I mentioned comes. They said four to seven days in the uh, advertising blurb. I'm not going to hold my breath. We'll just wait and see. So it'll come out when it comes out. Might be in a week, might be in two weeks, might be longer. One last point. If you are not aware of it, I have a second channel which is about a completely different topic. It's about survival, bushcraft and it's called New Zealand Wild Man Alone. If you're interested in that stuff, check it out. Link in the description. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.